Andy, thank you so much for coming today and, and, uh, and thinking of us, of all the possible people in the world that could do a pedal board for you. We're certainly honored that uh, you picked us and it's already been in the field of battle. You used Indeed. it recently yeah. for the Grammys. Yes. What was sort of the maiden voyage with the rig? Well, you know, the task I, I set you out to do at the beginning was a little complicated because I didn't really know how to um, articulate exactly what my needs were. I had a lot of I know what I don't want kind of things. Uh, but getting this back and taking it on its maiden voyage really helped me understand exactly what I wanted to hear because I had to, um, I learned about 50 uh, Joni Mitchell tracks to play at this tribute for her in Vegas. And I wanted to try and mimic a lot of the sounds that she was using in the 70s, which had a lot of chorus. And she was using her acoustic guitars, but also she was using this 335 that she mm -hmm. was using a lot. It was only much later where she was using tunings in a Parker guitar. and. I wanted to try and use my baritone acoustics and my um, uh, acoustasonics, the, the Fender acoustasonics guitars, and some of my 335s through this board and get those sounds. And I was able to achieve it beautifully because it's so set up for that kind of ambient kind of feel that I walked away feeling like um, I was a new guitar player. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. It, it, it helped my brain feel much cleaner and um, more uh, uh, focused. Um, there weren't, you know, for just the aesthetic reasons alone, being that it's as clean as it is and as beautiful as it is, made my life much easier. Yeah, and I know that this was, you know, from the state that it was in beforehand, I know that you were sort of, you know, experimenting with different orders or you kind of had used different orders. So this is kind of like locking it down into maybe the more standardized way that you might have used it and establishing some new pedals in here. I know that you had auditioned some of our stuff yes. and, and uh, trying out a new compressor on this particular right. rig. Can uh, we maybe walk through the signal path and, and then maybe go through some of the tones and maybe just start with kind of where the signal comes into the board. And I'll, I'll try to remember the best I can if you, you can you're help. You're gonna have to, I'll do my best, but okay. remember, I'm not, I'm not really, um, I'm not a super tech head. Right. I know what I like to hear, and you've got it set it up really well for yeah. me. Um, so I'll do my best to talk the audience through this, but yeah. this is for like beginners, okay? Because I'm still at my age and after, you know, as many years as I've been playing, I'm still a beginner at what works and what doesn't. So Mason and his team were really great at helping me do that. Yes. So. so what I remember is under the hood here, we came into a, a custom buffer interface box that right. I made for you. Right. And the guitar comes in there, and then I think it immediately goes into your Klon Centaur, as I recall. Right. It goes right into the Centaur. And then from there to the Steel String Supreme that SRV, which is a new pedal for you that yeah. you had kind of auditioned. And yeah. what is, I, mean, I think people know the Centaur really well. It's it's a pretty iconic pedal at this point. And the Steel String, we'll, we'll demo it later, but yeah. what was it kind of doing for you? That um, it gave me, it, it, it was almost acting like a boost yeah. in a way. It kind of acted like a boost, but there was, it made a little bit more clarity yeah. to like harder parts. Okay. And um, that was nice without being totally overwhelming, which yeah. I really liked. So after the Steel String Supreme SRV, it then goes over to the JHA, uh, JHS color box, right. which is like the preamp uh, EQ. Right. And then from there, it goes under the riser and hits the Keeley GC2, which is a DBX style which compressor. Which is the new compressor you turned me on to, yeah. which I'm loving. It's really great, and, and ordinarily, most guitar players, you know, if you think of like a Dynacomp or an Orange mm -hmm. Scooter, they might put that right up front. Right front. 
But for a studio context and a lot of stuff that you I do, do that. yeah, you, we'd always put that after the microphone. And so this is sort of mimicking sort of what that would do in the context of sort of overdrives being more kind of like amplifier sounds Probably. and then putting the uh, the compressor after that. And then it goes to the Vertex Boost, which is also a new, a new yeah. one for you. And that's attached to the volume pedal, which also incorporates your tuner. Right. Then from there, it goes back to the interface box, which has a little send and return loop where you could use to audition mm -hmm. other pedals or use an effects loop amplifier if you wanted. And then uh, it goes to the deco. And then the deco starts our stereo chain. That's exactly right. Then goes to H9 in stereo, Mobius in stereo, back up to the top, Timeline in stereo, Big Sky in stereo, then back underneath to the interface box, which has the left and right outputs with an isolated output as well. So you get that perfect galvanic isolation when you run stereo amps. And as far as you were aware, quiet on stage when you were uh, on the Grammys? Extremely quiet. Great. It was beautiful. Yeah, as long as you're happy, the engineers are happy. And No, and I was scrambling. Remember, I had something like 22 guitar changes. Right. And this was quiet. Right. It handled every guitar and amp that was going through it without giving me any problems. It was beautiful. That's great. Well, I know that we've we've gone through the signal path, but I think what really what people want to hear is sort of your core sounds, how you're using these in combination to kind of get the sounds that you go for, whether that's in a live performance context or whether that's in you know, doing the, some of the scoring stuff that you do. If you would kind of walk us through maybe your top three or sort of top sure. five signature sounds, I'd love to hear. Well, it was interesting it. because I came to you and said that I needed something to help me um, to create an ambient board mm -hmm. because I'm using this exact setup in my studio in all of my shows right now yep. because I'm doing a lot of ambient stuff in yep. all these different shows. And I had in my studio, it was a mess. It was a total mess. There was cables and pedals and outlets and power supplies, borrowing this power supply and that power. I, it was just a mess. Every time I looked down, it felt like it was my brain. Mm -hmm. So I can, when you came to me and I was like, I need this to be perfect, you did it. <laughs> so, um, Mostly what I've been doing is using the ambient stuff. I haven't really gotten into the hard, the harder edge stuff, but I'm, I'm, I'm um, exploring that now. Okay. Um, I can send you through a little bit of what I, what, what the kind of ambient stuff that I've been doing in the studio with this. And I also, not just going through two amps to split it, but I'll also just go direct through my Dante into my DAW. Got and it. It's beautiful. Nice. It's beautiful. So it works great direct or it's into the amps. It's great direct. It's just incredible direct. And what today, have we got right it, now? Yeah, and, so, and today gear-wise we have the guitar is This what, is Honor? a 1974 Mad Cat, okay. uh, Honer Mad Cat. Um, and the beauty about this guitar is that it's incredible clean and it can handle distortion really well. Great. Um, and it's, it, I, I can make it sound like a 335, or I can make it sound like a real clangy, tang, tang, twang, telly. Yeah. Um, it does not sound like a, 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 um, um, a Strat. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't sound like a Strat or a Les Paul. Um, so yeah, so we're going from the Mad Cat direct into the Klon. Okay. Um, I'm bypassing the Klon right now, but what I do have on right now, I have the Deco on because I always keep it on. Yeah. I, uh, there's a certain sa saturation yep. that I love that hits every tone I use. So I always Just keep that, that on. on. But interestingly enough, before the stereo out of any of the Strymon stuff, the wobble, the double tracker wobble on the Strymon Deco acts like this beautiful chorus yep. guitar. So mm -hmm. I, I will use that as well. So. Let's try doing this first. So I will go ahead and keep that on. We've got the timeline on. It doesn't really matter what the tempo is. I'll keep my eventide off right now and let's see what we've got going on. And originally on Purple Rain, what chorus was I that? I just used a the, just the original chorus. The Boss CE1? The Boss CE1, yeah. And what was the amps that you were into for that? I was using um, a Mesa Boogie uh -huh. and uh, 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 JBLs. Oh, like, so is it a Mark 1? Yeah, yeah, it was a Mark 1. Okay, mm -hmm. it was a Mark 1. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
That's in, in, and that was just in mono or is that in stereo? That was mono. It was all mono. All mono, baby. Wow. I think everybody is, it sounds so Old huge, you know? Yeah, I know, but everybody you know. assumes it's this And I was using this great, uh, I had a Rickenbacker that was totally um, transformed. It had GNL pickups in it, and mm. it was, all the holes were closed, and you know, I mean, it was blaspheme. But anyway, I, I had two of them, and I used those guitars for all of the Purple Rain stuff. They were stolen, if anybody knows where they <laughs> are. <laughs> I'm the mother of those two children. I yeah, want we'll them get, back. We'll get Dog the Bounty yeah, Hunter. Yeah, come on. on. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm going to play just the beginning of Purple Rain and show you the sound that I use minus the uh, chorus, the, uh, the CE, originals, the, the CE1. CE1 yeah. yeah. Um, the only thing that I'm going to do differently right now is I'm going to add a little bit of the big, big sky in Okay, there. a little um, room reverb on yeah, that. Yeah, a little re reverb at the end of it. I have, like I said, I've got the deco yeah, on. Yeah, both channels on on the deco. I've got both channels on. Okay. And I do have the chorus on the Mobius set, but I won't put it in yet. So okay. I'll just show you okay. what the uh, deco sounds like without it. Getting much more original yeah, than that. Right. <laughs> All right, now this is going to have the Mobius, and it'll probably just spread out. Got it. <laughs> so, if you don't mind me asking about no. that song, the movie came out. Obviously, it was a big hit. How how far distance was like the recording of that song, or even you know, that that song even came about between that time and when the movie was filmed? Um, it, it wasn't a long time. So, we were in rehearsals for the Purple Rain tour as we were kind of preparing to get the the film out so I, got, I guess it must have been maybe could be six months uh -huh. six months before and did you know it was going to be a hit before it... I had a sense uh -huh. I had a sense there's you know I, I've been asked that question before and I can only say and I was really young I was 19 right I um, I just had a feeling that this wasn't gonna just go away. I right. just had this feeling that this is bigger than all of us. Mm -hmm. And um, especially when we started working out all of our parts to Purple Rain and this iconic intro came out yeah. of me You're and right. we just knew, and I knew it in Prince's face too because he kept having me play it longer and longer and longer. Right. And the original time, we, the first time we ever played it live, there's video footage of it where he has me playing it for like 10 minutes before <laughs> he comes back on stage <laughs> and starts the song. So it, 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 we knew it was something. Nice. And how structured was that intro as far as like what he had dictated either by way of, you know, sheet music or whatever he provided, how much There was none of, none of it. He just said, I have this song idea, and it goes a little something like this, and it was right. like this little country tune. Uh -huh. he played the, like, triads on the piano, uh -huh. but he had the melody and he had uh -huh. words, and he said, what are you all gonna come with? What can you do? What, right. what, what, what's your thing on this? And I thought to myself, how do I make, how do I make it bloom? How do I make those chords bloom mm -hmm. with this very simple melody? Yeah. And I just came up with these yeah. sort of like... Grabbed your chorus and your Mesa uh, Boogie and... And, and I stretched the chords. Yeah. I stretched the chords out. Yeah. Yeah, I would say, I mean, you can't I got get the more bluer, I call them bluer notes. Like yeah. I, I gave it more blue <laughs> notes. Yeah, well, absolutely gorgeous arrangement. And uh, I think that that's always the thing that you know, guitar players like you are, are, are often, uh, people don't realize that you know, you're, you're almost an arranger as much as you are a guitar player. In that situation, yeah, I mean, you have to self-arrange for yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, for sure. Beautiful, well, what are some other tones that you would often use uh, in combination with All right, these pedals? well, so I'm gonna take off 
the Mobius right now, and let's go ahead and keep the room where it's at. Okay. I'm going to turn off the wobble of the deco okay. and just leave the saturation. Okay. And I'm going to turn my H9 on. And what's the H9 set to as far as the The effect? H9 is set to um, a pitch shifter right okay. now, so I have uh, like different notes coming out of it, and okay. I use this specific spread for a lot of my ambient stuff. Okay. So I'm going to make it longer tail here and then see whether or not goes on. And would this be for kind of more of like kind of ambient pads that you'd be doing for scoring or stuff yes, like that? Yeah, or or songs. I did an album um, during the pandemic for this guy um, in England, um, um, Rag and Bone Man. Yeah, I think you sent me yeah. the, the iTunes on and that. And yeah. all of the guitars on that record I did um, with these pedals. Mm -hmm and a lot of the H9 for ambient. A lot of people don't even know that there's actual guitars playing on certain songs, <laughs> right? because it's really all ambient. I turn a lot of the actual guitar send down, so you're just hearing more of the mix. Of yeah, the it almost sounds like, I, when I listen to it, uh, some of it almost sounds like synth pads, yeah, it, kind yeah, of, yeah. Yeah, a lot, a lot of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but that's, cr that's a cool repurposing of the instrument, yeah. you know, where you can do yeah. those sort of unique sounds. Yeah. And it, it sounds absolutely great. So we've heard a couple of ambient sounds, how you might use those. But one that I'm really curious about is what you did with Cheryl Crow on My Favorite Mistake, which is definitely more of a kind of like a little bit gritty, not a lot of processing on it. What was the setup for that particular song? Um, just played like a 57 Telecaster through a, through a Fender Twin mm -hmm. and um, a slap from a half-inch machine okay. and into a compressor okay. and straight onto tape. And um, <sighs> yeah, it was really, it was just very simple setup, very it, simple. It was just like a black panel twin or was this a tweed twin? Or tweed. Tweed twin, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, it was just a tweed Yeah, twin. so how would you kind of set that up if you were gonna do sort of that Well, if setup? I was going to mimic that from this board, um, of course the clone would be in, I'd probably put the supreme setting on the SR SSS on. Yep. And a little bit of a slap from my timeline. I definitely probably crank a little bit more saturation. On the deco there. The deco, yep. Keeping the compressor, compressor on. on. And I think that's what I would do. All right, let's hear it. Let's see. <laughs> what I'd do. Yeah. I mean, can't get much more classic than yeah, that. Right. <laughs> and is other types of like, you know, you said that you're you're still kind of getting into the harder edge stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But ordinarily when you're when you're setting up maybe more overdriven sounds or, or, or lead tones, are you generally kind of going with kind of more milder stuff and not too heavy gain? Because we don't really have anything on here that produces that much gain. Yeah, we do not. No, but although the color box can do that right but i have to be very careful where i use the color box right because um, that can almost get kind of fuzzy it can almost get kind of fuzzy yeah. so i i'm very careful with that right i i again i haven't explored enough to know what i'm going to use that for with harder edge stuff but what's really great about this board too is if i turn everything off the clean tone with just the saturation and this compressor is fantastic it's 
It's a great tone. Yeah, and I, and I imagine even direct, too, if you were doing some of the really clean, it's fun great. stuff, it would be it's good for great. that. It's great, it's great, it's great. As a matter of fact, I wonder if I would turn up the gain a little bit on... The deco. Yeah. We got it. I'll play that same thing. That's great tone. Oh yeah, it's an incredible funk sound. That I mean, is a great tone. Yeah, I, I'm really. I mean, this guitar too is sort of the the signature it, funk it, machine. It, it kind of is. Yeah, yeah. it kind of is. So it's like I've got the best of both worlds with this setup. So yeah, um, it is a beast of a of a board. Um, and there's so much that I can do with it. It's so versatile. But like you said, I mean, I'm, I don't think I'm going to play any, you know, um, Ramones on it. Right. I might. <laughs> but I, I, uh, I don't think so. When well, you have that audition loop, too, if you ever want to throw something that in there. That's, that's, that's that is here, correct. That is correct. That is correct. So it gives, you, gives you a lot of options that's as to whether right. you, you want to run through an amp with an effects loop or you could run stereo with right. an effects loop. Or you could run wet dry or wet dry wet. In fact, with that with that uh, audition loop, if you wanted to use it to separate kind of your dry and wet signal, right? So you have lots of options as far as that's concerned. But uh, Wendy, I feel like you've you've already you've given us some really great pieces of music here that we can sort of identify some of the core elements and how you're using it, whether that's ambient tones, whether that's drier, kind of like straight ahead clean stuff that's doing some funk, and also some of the stuff that you did with Cheryl Crow and giving us some examples. And I just really appreciate, again, you thinking of me uh, and Vertex to, to do this I, board. I think I forced you. In <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm, and I'm, I'm so glad that it worked out well for the Grammys. I know that it we did. were kind of under a, a time did. crunch yeah. and, and we're doing this, you know, kind of yeah. after the, the yeah. original build. But, you know, I appreciate it. It still looks very I mean, beautiful. I literally, <laughs> I tried to get a case for it built, right? But I couldn't get it built in time, so I was literally carrying the thing like it was my suitcase. <laughs> Just like that. Just, here, this is my board. Yeah, well, I loved it. we try to keep it light. You know, it's about as light as it can be over yeah, this no, number it's fantastic. of pedals. And, I and, uh, highly, and this is just not, you know, this has been my favorite one so far. I've had a few of them built for me over the days and the years, and this one is so user-friendly for me, yeah. and it did exactly what I needed was to declutter my mind and give me a nice tone. That's all I was going for. Yeah. And it, this is it. Well, again, it's it's been our honor, and, and thank you so much for again for thinking of us. And uh, if you wouldn't mind playing us out with something, I'd love to sure. just hear a little more of the the Wendy Melvoy and tones. Mm. What should I? Well, since it's an ambient board. Don't forget to tip your waiter. <laughs>